Welcome back to Core Cutting Today, where we break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting and give you my opinion on them. Stories like Roku 12.5, the OS update is finally here. We got all the details for you and everything it includes, and some things it doesn't that I know a few of you are gonna be disappointed in. Uh, cable TV, it's a surprisingly few number of people under 34 who are actually paying for it. We have the exact numbers here in a second. And lastly, Disney must face an antitrust trial. Um, a judge has ruled over its ownership of ESPN and Hulu and how it's driving up the cost of services like YouTube TV and DirecTV Stream. This comes after some uh, YouTube TV customers filed a uh, lawsuit related to this. They're trying to get a class action um, status act this to get everybody who's a YouTube TV or has been a YouTube TV customer involved. We'll tell you everything you need to know about these stories and more in a minute. First, if you want to learn more about these stories, hit the um, check out the first pinned comment and in the show notes down below, I'll put a link to each story there so you can rebound for yourself and come up with your own opinions. I'd love to hear from you. If you're new here, do me a big favor. Hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. It's a big help because then they recommend our content to more people. Hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of TV. So watch the shows you enjoy. So with that said, let's dive into it, starting off with Roku OS 12.5 with this. Now this update will be starting rolling out in the coming weeks and will roll out to Roku TVs and Roku players in the months to come. There's a lot in here. A lot of it's to do with content discovery. Uh, for example, they will now have a upgraded home um, sports tab, which you can follow your favorite teams and it will show you exactly where to stream the games, including on Macs which will launch today. Their sports one, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But make it very easy for you to find out how to stream your favorite sports, favorite TV shows, movies, and content discovery. It will also include now over 400 live channels in the live guide, where you'll be able to find 400 plus different free channels there. You're also gonna be able to sort them and favorite them in a totally new way. Big upgrade to the to the Roku Live Guide to make it a lot more usable rather than just have a massive list of 400 streaming channels plus whatever antenna channels you're using if you're on a Roku TV. Some of the other things here include the uh, a new um, music playlist system. You can now um, stream more music through here on the Roku channel. Your photo uh, screensaver app will now link to your Google Photos account so you can use photos from Google Photos to stream on your, uh, as your screensaver on your Roku TV with that. You will also see slight under the hood um, improvements, especially on Roku TVs. There'll be far more controls over the 4K picture quality and settings, so you can adjust it to be exactly what you want. They say that'll come in the update, but starting right now in the updated Roku mobile app, you'll be able to adjust the settings on your Roku TV to include improved 4K picture adjustments there. Um, you'll also find uh, some other things like what to watch categories and more added to the Roku home screen and the Roku app. This is just a small, um, grouping of everything that's been included in this. The big things, again, I think are, again, the, uh, how to find stuff, especially with sports, making it very easy to find out where the game is very quickly through Roku. The linking of Google Photos to your uh, Roku account so you can put your photos right here onto your Roku TV, make a nice screensaver, your Roku player, really nice feature there. And then a lot of the under the hood improvements like the improved uh, ability to do the picture contrast and color and more. I think a lot of people will like this. Also the live guide being more customizable will be a nice feature. The downside here is it's still a standard Roku user interface. They tested it out for a long time and a lot of us had it for a while and then they took it away was the four by four look. They improved like the search bar at the top, all kinds of little tweaks like that, that they've been testing. None of that made it into this. So if you saw our, our um, story where we had the picture of our Roku with the four by four look, the uh, Roku app section, the Roku search bar at the top, folders for things like inputs and more. None of that, as of this announcement, are included. We'll just see, Roku has a habit of announcing some things and then leaving other things for a surprise once the update actually starts rolling out. We'll keep a close eye on it, but that's everything we know about the Roku 12.5 um, uh, update. We'll uh, post over at Core Cars News exactly when it starts rolling out, they say in the next few weeks. All right, a lot to cover here, so we're gonna go kind of fast. Make sure to check out the stories down below to learn more about these. All right, um, the Leachman Group came out with a new survey and says just 13% of Americans 34, 18 through 34 are paying for cable TV. Of that, they say 63% of Americans in that age range have never paid for cable TV, and 24% have in the past been cable TV subscribers, but canceled are now core cutters. 
You can see why many cable companies are starting to just walk away from TV. If just 13% people 34 and under that are adults with households are paying for cable TV, you get an idea why that's not a very sustainable business. We'll keep a close eye on this story, but I want to ask you, do you know anybody 34 and under who pays for cable TV and why? I wonder how many of those people are paying for it because it's, for example, included in their HOA fees if you have a condo. Um, I have several family members now who own condos where the cable is just included or they rent in an apartment where cable is included in the rent. That's becoming increasingly popular. I'll be interested to find out how many people in that 13% bracket are people who just pay for it because their rent or their HOA fees, their condo, for example, just includes it as part of the fee. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you know anybody like that. I sure do. All right. Disney has been ordered to face trial for an antitrust lawsuit from nine YouTube TV customers who allege that their ownership of Hulu Plus Live TV and ESPN has been used to drive up the cost of services like YouTube TV and DirecTV Stream. They're arguing that Disney is deliberately putting pressure on these companies to push the price up by requiring them to have ESPN in their base bundle and to carry a bunch of other channels if they want ESPN. Very common here, if you want ESPN, you have to have the Disney Channel and Freeform and more. We just saw this with Spectrum, where Spectrum actually fought back and successfully got eight of those channels dropped and got them to bundle Disney Plus and ESPN Plus into the streaming or into their cable packages included with that price. We'll see how this plays out. Now, they're trying to get class action status where everybody who is a YouTube TV customer of all five plus million of you out there and probably people who were not currently a subscriber, but were at some point during this time. Um, they're hoping that that will uh, help drive up the number of people out there that are going to be in this and make it a bigger case. We'll see how this goes. Just because the judge has ordered this to court doesn't mean that Disney's going to lose this case. This is a pretty standard practice. You see NBC Universal, Warner, and more all doing similar tactics. You want all of our channels or a particular channel, you have to carry all these other channels with it. And honestly, if most channels didn't do that, even things like CNN probably wouldn't be here because not enough people would pay for it with, uh, if it wasn't being forced bundled on them. So we'll keep a close eye on that. We'll cover the story as we learn more, but very interesting story there. All right, today, not exactly sure when today, but today, Max will launch its new sports streaming tier that is called uh, Bleacher Report Sports. Now, Bleacher Report is on um, Warner's big sports brand. You're probably familiar with the website. They had a streaming service for a while. On Max, now you'll be able to, through that add-on, stream uh, TNT, TBS, and other sporting events, things like March Madness, MLB um, playoffs, NBA, NHL, and more will all be streaming through this on Max for free now for a few months. Later, um, early next year, it'll cost you $9.99 if you want to keep it. But for the next few months, you get to try this out for free and see if you like it. Now, Fubo TV customers, Hey, this is a way to finally get those Turner Sports that you do not have. If you're a Max customer, $9.99 is a pretty good deal for it. Also, if you just want March Madness, Max plus this package and an antenna for CBS can maybe be the best deal for March Madness. We'll have to see when we get closer what the actual deals are, but right now that could be the best deal. All right, good news for football fans. Starting last night, there's going to be 48 consecutive days of live college or pro football on your TV, thanks to new contracts from ESPN. They struck some new deals and they will now have Tuesday and Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday um, football now, all through October, almost completely through September. This could have been 50 plus days of continuous football, but the uh, Thanksgiving Eve has no football game. Still time to fix that. We can fix that ESPN. But from now until the day before Thanksgiving, there will be live football on your TV every single day. Anybody here, big football fans, leave me a comment. Let me know if you are excited about that or not. All right. Uh, uh, we have a ton of early Prime Day deals. I had to jump in, make sure I get the right story loaded here. Uh, Amazon's big Prime Day event is next week, the 10th and 11th of October, but many Prime Day deals for core cars are already live, including Fire TVs on sale starting at $17.99 for the Fire TV Stick Lite, $19.99 for the Fire TV Stick. Honestly, 
spend the extra two dollars get the fire tv stick the remote's a lot nicer on that there's also deals like 10 percent back if you buy with an amazon credit card right now on limited devices google nest wi-fi their lowest price ever for their mesh network roku's express 4k bundle is on sale this is a really good bundle for roku and more check that out link in the show notes if you're looking for prime day deals we'll have um, deals all day during prime day and leading up to it for the best core cutting deals all right real quick here the new pixel 8 pixel 8 pro and um, pixel smartwatch has been announced uh Shelby and Roger did full detailed posts on this. A lot of interesting AI news there. They're really pushing software updates on this. It is a nice improvement, better battery life, faster charging, which I'm very excited about. I do have one on order. I'll have a full review. But if you want to learn more about those new devices, check it out, carsnews.com, link in the show notes. And lastly today, Pluto TV is adding eight new live channels this week, uh, but they're removing three. These ones include Pluto TV icons, Ghost Hunters, Real Disaster Channel, Destiny, and more all being added here with your uh, Pluto TV free access there. If you want to find out all the channels and see the ones being removed, check out the show notes down below and in the first pinned comment, I'll put a link to each one there. Well, that's it for today. I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll be back again real soon with another core cutting today. Until then, take care, be safe. Thank you for your support.